everybody, Erica Sirwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. I'm gonna show you how to make this card with a really special technique um, using your Stampin' Blends. Uh, this card features also the slim card dies. It makes a slimline card, which uh, fits in like a legal size envelope. Um, I haven't used these dies yet. This is a really big trend, these long skinny cards. Um, and so I was excited to pull them out and give them a try. Um, we're also using the Kite Delight stamp set. This is in the current 2022 spring catalog. And we're going to use some new colors, uh, the new 2022 to 2024 in colors that come out on May 3rd. Um, we're going to use two of them, Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky. We're also going to use uh, a returning set of in colors called Polished Pink. Okay, well, let's get started by doing that background. You're going to need a piece of vellum, and I have taped it down to just a piece of chipboard with painter's tape. Um, this is going to help it stay flat so it doesn't kind of curl up and things, you know, um, run off, and you have better control when you tape it down. Um, I've made it a little bit bigger than what I'm going to need. That way we can use this die. Um, we're going to cut out a piece of white, and we're going to um, adhere it onto there. So the first thing that you're going to need is some alcohol, and this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. Um, I You can put this in your blending brush if you want, um, your water painter, I'm sorry, your water painter, but I don't use alcohol very often, so I'm just going to leave it empty. Um, I typically have water in it. Uh, you could also use a paintbrush. Um, I want mine to look kind of like a sky so that's kind of why I'm going with the the blues and a little bit of a, the pink I have found that the the purples and the blues are so dark they really overpower the pink so I'm going to put more pink than I am going to do with the purple um, and the blues this is light and dark orchid oasis I'm just going to go with the dark and I'm just going to add some color all over you know just randomly really random and then this is starry sky i'm going to go with the dark starry sky as well whoops and we'll just add this in and remember that these darker colors are going to overpower the lighter colors so if you really want to have a lot of um, variation and not all the dark then you know do more of the lighter ink all right, so I'm just gonna kind of fill in all over. This will pick up the color of your other marker, so be careful. It might be better to do the lighter color first. You can, if you get it on your blend like I did, you can just run it until it's gone. All right, let's do a little bit more over here. All right, I think I'm gonna take my orchid and add a little bit more like that. I mean, I could just do this all day. You can add lots of color, you can add a little bit of color. Depends on, you know, what look you're going for. I actually did this three or four times before I got, well, they actually all looked good by the end, but um, I, want, I kept thinking, oh, I wanna do that differently, I wanna do it differently, so I kept trying different things. The one thing I found with me is that I am too heavy handed with the alcohol. I added too much alcohol and then my colors really just kind of all were like in a blob. So go easy on the alcohol first. It does expand quite a bit and you can see how it's starting to run together and you can, you know, run it around like this. Add a little bit more. My problem is I always just do way too much alcohol. So start with a little, because you can always add more, but you can't really take it away. So I need to add some right here, right here. And as this dries, it's gonna look different. Here where it kind of puddles, those colors are gonna be more intense. Um, over here, you know, where it's spread out, the colors will be lighter. And one thing you can do is let it dry and then add more. You can add more color, add more alcohol, just keep playing with it until, you know, you get to a look that you like. Now, for the sake of the video, I have already done a couple of them, and I will tell you that these were actually, I did 
I, let, I did it, let it dry. I did it, let it dry a couple of times. So you can see um, how they are both different. This one had more pink, and this one obviously had more of the blue and purple. So we'll let that dry, and we'll use these um, for the video. Okay, so let's see. I think I'm going to use this one right here. Well, well nope. <laughs> We're not going to use that one. Be careful when you take these off. Painter's tape is good, but it's still tape. All right. Now, I'm going to cut out that fun chevron die, the slim card die from basic white cardstock. And I'm going to put adhesive sheets on the back of the cardstock to make it a sticker. That's going to make it just a whole lot easier to deal with. I'm not going to have to worry about any of the glue sticking or smearing or doing whatever. I'm really messy with my glue. So I really prefer to use these adhesive sheets. So cover the back like that. Okay, and then I like to take my scissors and cut off all the excess so it doesn't stick to my cut and emboss machine. Now, if you're looking for more Kite Delight ideas, I have three other projects. Um, if you hop back one post on my blog, you'll find them there. All right, let's bring over our cut and emboss machine. And we're gonna run this through. Now you should look this technique up if you've never seen it. Look it up on Pinterest or on YouTube. There's so many different ways to do it. I like to do lots of color, but sometimes people just do a little bit of color and have just a little bit of that ink um, you know, spread on their paper and it's just really, really pretty. All right, let's see how we did. Very nice. Take all of that out. And let's see if I can get that out. Let's grab my take your pick tool. And there we go. All right, so now we'll bring over this. Man, I can't believe I tore it. It's been sitting there for several days, so it got it got attached. Peel off your backing. It's a little bit persnickety because of the the windows. Make sure we got it all. All right. Now just lay it down onto your vellum. Okay. And now take your scissors and I'm just going to cut right along that line. This is kind of a fun rainy day activity. Tape down a bunch of vellum, start playing with your Stampin' Blends, and then let them all dry, and then make cards out of them. Use them all as backgrounds. They're really just so beautiful. All right. Now, if I can get my mess cleaned up here. I have a card base, a slimline card base, and I'm gonna adhere this down right to the front. This is um, our new Orchid Oasis color. You could use the Starry Sky as well, or Polished Pink, whichever one you want. And I set it down, it's gonna make that color darker because it's a dark background. Isn't that just beautiful? And you can see how different it looks from that one. All right, now let's make our cute little kite. I have um, a piece of thick basic white, and I'm gonna stamp my kite in Memento. And I'm gonna color it with Orchid Oasis. I'm gonna start with a light Orchid Oasis. And I'm gonna color the whole thing. And I, I like to use the bullet tip end of my marker, but that is totally a matter of preference. We have a brush tip on one end 
and the bullet tip on the other end. I use the brush tip um, a lot of times when I have a big space to cover, but I also find that I am more likely to get out of the lines than when I do that. So just to be extra safe, I'm gonna use this end. All right, now I'm gonna take my dark Orchid Oasis right here, and I'm gonna just do like every other section. I think I'm gonna just do these lines like this, vertical sections. And then down here, I think I'll do every other one. All right, now take your scissors, cut it out. These are really easy to cut. We don't have matching dies, but I don't really think you need them because you're just cutting straight lines. Right here, we've got a little bit of a curved line, but still pretty simple. All right, now I have cut out a stitched, nope, not it's not called stitched, it's called a stylish shape circle. These are new dies also coming from the new annual catalog on May 3rd. And I'm going to stamp the kite tail right there. We'll grab this um, Orchid Oasis again and color these. And you could do one of the other colors if you'd like to pull in some of that other color. And then we'll stamp our sentiment in polished pink. Your friendship is so uplifting. Right there. Whoa. And then grab dimensionals. Put a dimensional right there. Boy, I have ink all over me now. And we'll put that. Let's try that again. Put that. You know what? I think I'm going to actually cover up those bows. Let's do it like that. All right. Now, a couple more dimensionals right here. And then uh, last, I, I cut out some um, stitched clouds. These are from the Give It A Whirl dies. And we'll add a couple of clouds. We're going to do one right here like that, and then we'll do one over here, like, hmm, maybe we need to do it that way, like that. And there you have it. All right, if you haven't given this stamp and blend technique a try, I highly encourage you to do it, it's really fun. And I also encourage you to try out this size card. A slimline card is really trendy, and it can fit in just those regular size envelopes that we mail, you know, like bills and stuff in. All right, hop back to my blog. You'll find the measurements and the supply list there and a link back to the other Kite Delight projects if you'd like to see those as well. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.